Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. This is the planning committee meeting of Froomtown Council. I'm Steve Tanner. I'll be chairing this evening's meeting. I um, want to make our meetings available as many people as possible, regardless of where they are. So we use a hybrid setup of here in person at the Town Hall Chamber and online via Zoom. Uh, usual housekeeping, emergency exit is still in the rear corner of the room and assembly point is in the car park. Toilets are still where they used to be, down the end of the corridor on the right. And there is accessible lift to the right of lift. Um, any panelists on Zoom, please use electronic raise hand by clicking on the participants button at the bottom of your screen. Um, usual rules in the room, please raise your hand. Uh, any attendees on Zoom, please post questions through the Q&A board. Attendees' names will become visible on the questions board for the record as your question is answered. Um, tonight, Jane will clerk, Hannah will manage the questions board and participant settings. The meeting will be recorded for minuting purposes and we will also live stream to our YouTube channel. Oh, it will be uploaded tomorrow. Great. Um, item number two, any questions, comments or information from um, councillors or public? No. Great. Item number three, uh, agree any apologies of absence received? None. Great. Item number four, any declarations of members' interests? Well, wow. item number five, to agree the minutes of the meeting held on the 10th of October 2024. Any comments? Suppose it. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Philip. Mm -hmm. right. yes. That's the majority. Majority. Item number six, um, to consider the major plan applications received, over to Jane. Thank you, Steve. I'll just share my screen. Okay, so the first application we're going to discuss is number 593 on the agenda. And this is Parbury House, 98 to 100 Vallis Road, Froome. The description is for a proposed ground floor rear extension to existing annex. So here on the screen, you can see the site location plan and the block plan. This here is the main house and over here is what they're referring to as the existing annex. For a bit of context, this is just past the entrance into the cotton works where the boulder rooms are as you go past on Ballas Road. This, you can just see the main house in the background there and this is what they're referring to as the annex. So although they're calling it an annex, actually on the floor plans, they described it as storage um, and home office in the, in the roof space. Proposed floor plans, uh, as you can see, it is to use it as a one bedroom, um, they're referring to it as a ancillary accommodation to be used by a family stroke guest. Uh, you can see that there's um, bedroom, kitchen, bathroom, all, all the mod cons. The reason that I highlighted this one for discussion, oh, sorry, let's just show you the existing elevation. So this is the road elevation that I just showed you the street view element of. The back and this side elevation is quite good at showing you the difference in levels. As I was saying, the reason that I highlighted this one for discussion is because um, looking at it, my first thought was, goodness me, that's a big, big extension, particularly if you look at it in the uh, uh, sort of, what do you call that, photo montage um, here. <clears throat> and um, you can see that this, this is what they're referring to as the single story extension but it does drop down the steps to here, which is effectively just a sort of covered walkway. When I was looking at it, I was thinking, oh, well, there's another, there's another floor under there, <clears throat> but there isn't, it's actually just that, that walkway area. Um, I think if I go back to the photograph, my concern was how big it was, you know, it looked overbearing, but actually when you consider behind all there is behind is effectively the, the car parking area to um, the, the cotton works and the various businesses around there there's no there's no overlooking you re, you, you won't see the, 
the mass of that extension from, from the front, that front elevation won't change. Um, but that's why I brought it up for discussion, just because um, on first look, it looked like a really big extension. Um, and Councillor Dunk's comments are that actually he wanted to wait and see what we said before he made his mind up about his comments, because <laughs> I, I, think, I think he had the same thought, goodness me, that's a really big extension. Um, but I'm not sure that it's going to impact on anybody. Um, if we are happy to um, support the application, then given that they have specifically stated it will be family and guest accommodation, it would need a condition to tie it to the main house. Otherwise, they'd need to show it with its own separate curtilage, parking, etc. Over to you. Great. Thank you. Andy, see you. What's the parking situation like? I mean, implicit in creating this additional accommodation is probably at least one extra car. Yes, yeah, so somewhere, oh, here it is. Uh, it, they do show, um, hang on, this is so small on my screen, I can't see it. They have, they, mm. one of the plans somewhere, they have shown that there is space for one um, car. You can see that the, the grounds are actually quite big. So, so it, it will accommodate. I guess. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think, as you say, subject to being it being tied to the main house, um, I can't see a problem with it too bad. Okay, thanks. Any other, Philip? Um, I, I know the property because I know, knew a previous owner really well, so I've visited it many times. And yeah, there is that huge sort of fall away overlooking the industrial park, which I think wasn't that part of TH White or something at one stage? Um, and there is actually quite a bit of parking at the front. Um, with a little bit of sort of manoeuvring, you can actually get cars side by side. You probably get four or five cars on there. Um, like you, Jane, when I first looked at this in the comments, in the comments column, I thought, oh, that's huge. And I wasn't sure whether it was that building or whether it's attached to the house, but it's that um, external from the house uh, annex. So, um, in terms of about the condition linking it to the to the main house, I have no real issues with that. Great, thanks, Philip. Any other, Mark? We often say um, condition it that it has to be ancillary to the house rather than independent. Do the planners give permission on those basis? Yes. But it, is, there, is it ever enforced? Um, that's a really good question. I think it would only ever be enforced if somebody were to um, notify the enforcement team that it wasn't being used in line with the condition. Um, well, if they tried to sell it off independently or something, that's probably when it would come up, isn't it? That, that, that's, the, that's the key point when you try and sell it, yeah. You wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to sell it as an independent or a separate dwelling. Fiona. I think it's a classic example of I don't see it doesn't have any impact on anyone else it's within the grounds of their home it's up to them to do what they want with it it doesn't there's no red flag so I think fair enough like I don't think there's anything for us to yeah comment on it just feels like it's it's up to them if they want to do it so no objection subject no. to the condition or Absolutely. Well, objection. no objection no objection subject to the um ancillary to the main house was that, oh, Thank sorry, you, um, that was all voted on, wasn't it? I missed that. Uh, everybody's hand is up, so no, uh, be unanimous. Let's, let's Thank you. Start with the right and work our way around. Um, proposed by um, by Philip and seconded by Mark. Yeah, everyone's in agreement. Lovely. Thank you. So the next application on the list is uh, number 594, and there's 102 Great Western Street, and it's for a proposed loft conversion with a rear dormer and front roof lights you can see the site plan here probably better to look at the um the block plan uh, so this is 102 just here where my cursor is will be where the dormer window will go um, and i think it's just worth noting this building here which has recently had planning permission This is a section through the house showing the dormer, uh, identified as a playroom with a shower room. 
existing elevations, proposed elevations, and there you can see the proposed dormer, which will actually be going on this roof here. The reason I flagged this one was because of a um, bit of concern about overlooking, and I thought, I can't remember what the house that recently got permission looked like and um, where it would sit in, in relation to this. So just for reference, go back to the block plan again. So this is where the dormer window will be going. This is the building that has permission. This elevation here is the one that the dormer would be facing. Um, so there aren't actually any windows above this um, fence or wall line there. So that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but actually I think you also have to consider um, this property next door as well. I mean, appreciating that they you know, already have rear windows um, overlooking, but, but there, there is a potential for overlooking. I think it's quite difficult to judge what that might be like unless you're actually on on site have, having a look at it. But both, so overlooking directly from, you know, in a straight line from across to this property, but yeah. also being able to look over yeah, into garden. into their garden, yeah. Which, granted, they can already do from their upstairs windows, but there's just there'll be that much. That yeah, they'll be looking down. It may not be a problem, but I think I just wanted to to flag it. Wasn't there also a concern about the size of the dormer being like a double one rather than just a single one? It's a big one, yeah. isn't it? Um, and I don't, I mean, the estate is still relatively new. I'm not sure any, there's any precedent for this. Are there any others like that on the estate that we, I've never seen one? No, and, and I think if you, if you look at the photographs there, mm -hmm. you, know, you can, all right, it, it's, it's at the back. Um, and perhaps not many people are going to see it, but I do think it, it really will be very prominent. Any? Uh, yeah, just struck me, as you say, this isn't a very old development, mm -hmm. um, but actually if it had probably been built a few years later, the developers would almost certainly put three-storey townhouses in anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm not too worried about this as long as there's uh, no complaints from the, uh, the people who are going to be impacted locally. Okay. Anyone else got any comments or thoughts? Just looking at the um, consultee list, do we know if the developer who's um, developing that plot of land that we, we looked at a while ago, whether they've been consulted? Um, we don't know. Because I, I looked at it and I couldn't, couldn't see that on there. No. But possibly not. Have you expected that? Get, well, no, <laughs> leading no, question. Normally, what they would do is send a letter to the property. Yeah. But if the property's not there, it's a bit hard, <laughs> I isn't don't it? Don't know yeah. how they do that. Mm. Mm. <laughs> um, anyone, if you have any, 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 any thoughts on this one? It, it's, I don't know how to say this politely. It's not like there's particularly track. No, we're not preserving anything, the integrity of anything. Like it's a, it's a fine-looking mm. estate, but it's not sort of particularly I don't know we're not ruining anything so it doesn't again I'm sort of struggling with what I get the overlooking but when you look at the windows they're also quite like it's a big dormer but the windows are quite small in it if that makes sense oh, hang on. I'm looking at the right thing so these yeah yeah I mean they, well there's four small windows which effectively makes up one Pardon? There's four sort of small panes which effectively makes up one. Five, yeah. So that, yeah, it, I see what you mean. It adds up. I guess it's sort of they're not. It's not like it's full height or anything, which would increase the look. You know, being able to look into the other garden, for instance. It is setting a precedent. Does that matter? Yeah. I think. I mean, to me, it's, it is the overlooking. I think. I haven't really got a massive objection if if 
the planning officer is happy with the overlooking and the, and the neighbour. Certainly a number 100, I think, more than the, the people behind are happy. Um, that would be my sort of yeah. subject to planning officer checking the overlooking. And as you say about the president, I mean, it is at the rear of the property. Yeah, it, it is. But <clears throat> in, in terms of precedent, I mean, if you look up Weymouth Road, I mean, yeah. almost every single house has had some sort of rear um, uh, extension. Now, OK, they're older houses, but where's the cut-off date? <laughs> so, you know, um, I, I think yeah. the key issue here is, is the potential it is the overlooking. overlooking. Isn't it? Um, and as I say, you know, that... In, I think Steve was absolutely right to say no, uh, no objection subject to the planning officer being satisfied. There's no overlooking. We highlight it and then hopefully they'll double check. Yeah, happy, happy to that. propose we go with that. I'll propose it. And that's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Next on the list, we have number 596, which is 5 Gabriel close and it's for a first floor side extension I've started with the elevations and I'll explain why in a minute so these are the existing elevations along the top here and the existing floor plans these are the proposed elevations and floor plans so the the, the first floor extension is this element here. And I've put the block plan over here. Um, it is a bit faint. I couldn't get it to come out any, any darker than that. Just so to show you that this, this square here is the first floor extension. And it's the relationship with this um, property here, number three, I'm concerned about. Because that is going to, like, it comes pretty much right up to the boundary and it's not overlooking that we're concerned about here because there's no um there's no window he said trying to find the right end there's no window in the side elevation um but it will i think cause significant overshadowing um i, I assume i can only assume that there are windows here and and here um the potential for overshadowing, I would say, is quite significant. Um, that um, satellite image that you showed, did you have a look at earlier on? No. Fair enough. <laughs> I didn't put it in the PowerPoint. <laughs> okay. right, that's the north, though, right? So the sun will go like it's not, it's to the north of it. Yes, yeah. It's positive, but I think, do you see what you mean? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, what we. I suppose one thing we could ask for is that they do um, a sun path analysis to, mm. to assess whether the overshadowing will be significant. Okay. Any other comments, thoughts? Very similar to the last one, isn't it? Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, these ones are interesting, aren't they? Because uh, as far as we know, the, the, not that they've been loaded on the portal yet, but none of the neighbours have object, objected to these. Um, and you'd have thought if they had a, a real big issue, they would have um, put something on the portal. Um, it's difficult, though, because I often think this. It's like, you know, I don't want to do the neighbours' job for them or make assumptions, but you don't know whether they have seen it. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Mm. you know, and it's not that accessing this is for everyone, and particularly if, you know, we don't know who lives in that, building whether they're sort of able and to sort of access a porthole we don't know that yeah, so yeah. it is difficult I think there is it, yeah I see the issue I think there is real issue here for overshadowing isn't there also going to be a challenge in actually constructing it without entering the neighbor's property y yes <laughs> yes mm. potentially <clears throat> um I mean it's probably yeah maybe they could do it off a of scaffold I don't know, but um, you would like to think that they would have at least spoken to the, yeah, the yeah, neighbours quite, about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, it is only that potential neighbour dispute that worries me about this. Otherwise, it's a good, efficient use of yeah. space that's already been built on and it just Absolutely. gives an extra bedroom or two. Mm -hmm. Any 
any other thoughts? So, <clears throat> so the question is, do we, we, are, we obviously are, we are concerned about the overbearing on this one, aren't we? Quite significantly. So we, do we, I'm just trying to think how, how we, um, I don't want to necessarily, I suppose well, we have to object, really. So, and, you well, know. could we? Society not suggest a compromise? Um, the additional height may be acceptable if the structure extended less far to the rear. This would be possible by reducing the scale of the extremely proposed large bedroom suite. So what we're saying is we're, we're not objecting to the principle of an ex, uh, of a extension, extension yeah. but we are concerned about the potential for overshadowing to the neighbouring property <clears throat> and would like to see a um, some path plan to dem demonstrate the extent or lack of overshadowing that may be caused. Bingo. Brilliant. Yep. Happy with that? Yep. <laughs> just, just one other comment is that um, there's very little information provided with this and yeah. all the drawings, elevations and proposals and so on are all on one drawing. And what they don't actually show is the relationship of that new extension to the to the neighbor's house apart from that little yeah we had a look at you can get a satellite view i've just look, i've just looked at it yeah, yeah. um and it, yeah it is close right could, should we agree with what jane said yeah. get it look at the recording <laughs> get I've written, it. I've written, you it, written it down, I've written it down. <laughs> um i think yeah i, I yeah I'm, I'm comfortable with that yeah so we, yeah it's the in principle we're not objecting to okay Mm. Anyone want to propose that, or shall I? Uh, fill it proposed. Um, that's unanimous. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, everybody. Okay. The next one on the list uh, is number uh, is number uh, five. Uh, is number five nine seven. I think this is where it gets a little bit tricky. <laughs> so you may recall uh, at the last meeting we discussed the application on the adjoining site so just to clarify oh, sorry the, the, the description is the um, approval of reserve matter is following the outline um, for appearance landscaping layout oops didn't mean to do that you can't see it because it's under the layout and scale so just to try not to confuse you too much <laughs> This, this top one here is the application that we discussed at the last meeting, which was for this part of the site here. The one that we're discussing now is the other part, so that bit there. For context, the whole of the outline uh, for the commercial element includes all of this here. So far, we're only considering phases one or retail phases one and two. And we are looking at one tonight. And for even more context, <laughs> she says, um, so that we can all get our bearings. This is Sainsbury's. The, these, this, is, this is the site. This is the one that we discussed previously. Everybody with me so far? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that bit in there. Yes. Yeah. Where, where, where McDonald's is uh, here. Is there a McDonald's in front? Completely <laughs> lost my thread now. Thanks, Steve. Okay. So, so that we can look at it in a bit more detail. Let's. So, just just to reiterate, we are looking at the um, design layout landscaping and scale. Although we are only considering tonight what is within this red line boundary, I think it's worth pointing out that actually it, the, the access that goes in extends all the way through and into the bit that we discussed last time. So the entrance is here and the loading base for HGVs is here. This, 
this here yeah. is the front entrance into the building, um, which I think it's saying, is it family bargains or home, bar home bargains? HGVs come in here for deliveries, and they're, it's quite faint, but they're actually showing the showing a swept path analysis for yeah, lorries. Line, yeah. well, so, so can I be really dumb here? Yeah. So white area is a big... This, this, this is a retail yeah. unit. Car park. Yeah. yeah. That, the red is the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. yeah. And can you see the faint line around the yeah. road? Yeah. yeah. That is in theory so this is where the HTVs so were. Yeah. 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 Around there and then back out again. Now, on the application that we discussed at the last meeting, we were concerned about HGVs going through effectively where all the um, shoppers, clients would be parked. You can see these are um, here and here are disabled spaces. And I think you've got um, child, child um, parent child spaces here. Um, and they have shown, you know, that this is demonstrating that an HGV can turn around there. Is that safe though? I think is, is the question we need to ask ourselves given the, the mix of people that will be milling around. How often do HGVs drive in to drop off at? Right. Very point. I read the uh, acoustic report, you know me and uh, acoustics, yeah. um, and looking at what they've stated here it says the daytime assessment this is the um, noise level assessment has been based on two deliveries occurring in an hour per phase which is considered to represent a worst case scenario so they're actually basing this report on the fact that there could be two lorries it says the assessment has assumed that one of these is a standard hgv and the other, a HGV with refrigerated trailer compressor. Unloading of each takes 15 minutes, during which time the refrigerated trailer compressor would be running, but the HGV engine would not be running. So they're actually looking at a maximum, worst-case scenario, of two lorries per hour per phase. So that's four lorries actually going onto that combined site. I'm not saying that's what they're... That's what it will be, yeah. mm -hmm. but they're looking at that. Um, and also on, 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 well, well, on, the, on the acoustic side, there are nine um, fans, heat pump fans, which will be operating. They reckon that six will be operating at any one time. And they're proposing a four meter sound um, acoustic barrier. I've jumped ahead, Philip. Go on then. You're, because you're talking about that, yeah. just, just to put some context to what you're, you're saying, this is the, this, is the site that we're talking about yeah. and the this is the position of the houses that this this plan came from the noise assessment plan so it shows you the relationship of the houses with the site just to give some context to what you're saying yeah and also uh, reading through um, some of those dwellings will actually have balconies mm -hmm. but according to this acoustic report the balconies are relatively small just about 3.6 uh, square meters and because they can be used for drying clothes and growing plants in pots if there are no other you know other uh, spaces or amenities therefore they're not really considered when you're looking at the noise impact on um, residents which is a concern as well because the four meter high acoustic fence doesn't really doesn't shut the noise off no e even though that the conclusion of the noise assessment is you've guessed it <laughs> that the, the uh, residual noise levels during the operation of the proposed development would be low with the proposed mitigation measures in place yes. it's always within acceptable limits yes. is it the same developer doing the housing as doing this no no the, the houses um have being developed by Curo, yeah. Oh, gone to the wrong ones. Be during the day. I'm help, helping a resident who overlooks another retail development in the town. 
and they get deliveries at three o'clock in the morning. And I had to help her contact the company because the driver takes his break at three o'clock in the morning, parked outside her house, leaving the refrigerating truck going. And this is three or four times a week. So during the day, unloading whatever isn't really a problem, but a lot of these deliveries are done during at night so they can be ready to go the following morning. And so that would be a real problem for the people overlooking it. I don't understand how it's managed to get planning permission like so close, like a massive retail development right next to a housing development. So there, there is some, um, like an acoustic break fund, whatever you want to call it, between the housing and the commercial. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that, that was a lot of um, the issues that we, we raised when we were originally looking at the outline application. Um, part, I mean, partly they can't, they couldn't do a full noise impact assessment at the point of the outline because they didn't actually know what the commercial uses would be at that point in time. Um, so quite rightly, they've done a noise impact assessment now, which, you know, uh, essentially says that there, there won't be any, no any noise issues, but um, I guess it's whether or not you're, you're happy with, with that conclusion. Um. Also, so then going back to the HGVs, like, sorry, this is not an area of expertise, like, like, what do other, like, large things do? Like, do they have, like, what is, I'm trying to look at, like, home bases layout, and... I think if you look at, if you look at Sainsbury's, yeah. all the, all the HGVs, it, so if you go past um, McDonald's, there's a, yeah. there's a turning to the left, yeah. um, and that takes you in if you like, to the side of Sainsbury's around the back. So the HGVs go nowhere near the public okay. car parking area. Yeah. If you look at the other units. Home base um, is the same around the back. Home base is the same <coughs> around the back. Coast is the same. Um, what the other ones there, where the pet mm. shop is and mm. the, the carpet place. All around the back, isn't it? All around the back. So, so it, the deliveries are completely separate it's from, shop, yeah, yeah, tile shop, is it? Job. Yeah, proper yeah. job. <laughs> it's not, it's, yeah, definitely, it's not safe, like that's, you can't be having those massive HGVs with that close to a car park. Yeah. Right, so we got, initially, we've got two issues. There's the HGVs and the noise. Yeah. And there's more. So, um, sorry, one thing that I neglected to tell you, if you think, I think I put it in my notes, but it was the comments from Selwood Parish Council, because this is actually in Selwood Parish, it's, it's yeah. Stone Froome, um, and they've also raised um, issues about the HGVs and the fact that there's no, no turning circle, um, and they're saying that separate um, access and exit points should be provided for the HGVs. Um, so that's, that's the layout. Um, we're also considering the, the landscaping. Um, now, I know Helen Kay is not here with us tonight, but la at the last meeting, she raised concern about the, the loss of the amount of hedgerow. She wasn't clear about what hedgerow was being retained and what was being um, removed. It is quite difficult to see on this plan, but I have, um, I have printed out one if you want to have a closer look sorry for those online that can't see it so that's existing um satellite view yeah on that plan you'll 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 see that there is um an area just to show you these areas outline out, outlined in red identifies the area of hedgerow that will be retained which is essentially this this bit here. So all all of this hedgerow along here is going to be removed, um, and I think it just suggests something like um, some planting, like a um, wildflower planting or something in it, in its place. Um, so that. That was part of Helen's concern. So again, I went back to the original outline application um, and it's quite clear from the outline application that there was an intention to keep all of the existing hedgerows that 
are in place on the site. I mean, you might not want to look at these, but um, the, there's photos. Essentially, this site fits very prominently on the, on the top of the, the ridge line. So it's far stretching views from as far back as, um, is it Vinnie Lane? And um, I can't remember what the other road's called, but you, you will, you know, you can see them, particularly if you're on, on the public footpaths. Um, so the, uh, uh, the loss of that particular hedgerow there, I think, is going to impact on the houses that are already under construction, and some, in fact, um, have already been moved into. That's a concern about the landscaping. Um, and I think another concern, as, you know, as highlighted, I think, quite well by the Civic Society, is the elevation, you know, what it's going to look like, given given those far-reaching views. Um, it is going to be quite prominent, and maybe I will pass you the, this, because you can't see it well on the screen at all. Um, remember what I said? So that's yeah. the, um, the ski slope. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So, so in that photograph... That's, that's the existing industrial unit, so it'll be... You, you can you can see just in the corner there the um, the roofs and a little bit of the elevations of some of the existing units on the on the trading estate. Yeah, um, and I think whilst whilst you can see them, don't think, or sh rather, should I say, I, I think the, the the dark roof particularly um, that's proposed here would be very prominent the other um, the other thing that Selwood Parish Council raised is that they they thought it was a shame that they hadn't taken the opportunity to um, put solar on on the roofs here um, one good thing about sustainability is that they are looking to use um, heat hot, oh, air sources heat pumps with um that's not not the word i was struggling for um heat recovery system that's what i was looking for um and they're taking a fabric first approach but no solo right <laughs> any more comments apart from what james just said so just to so reiterate we've got hcvs noise edges um, and solar, like and solar and um, overall and look, look of it, basically. Yeah, I don't know what you call that, design or appearance. Um, the, appearance yeah. I mean, the other thing that jumped out at me when we were looking at the car park layout is that it'd be far smoother if they just made it one way. They've got two-way traffic around a tiny little circle there, which is just asking for shunts and bumps it just doesn't make sense to build in something that's likely to be an accident in the future yeah. isn't it, it I mean, when, when i looked at it this afternoon i thought why i don't know who actually owns that slip road that you were talking about jane the delivery road in fact i was there last night waiting for somebody to come off Perry's coaches um if they had re, re -cited or cited the actual department store at the top end you could have shared that access point because it does actually go almost as if it's going to go straight on but there's a, there's a turn to the right to get to the rear of Sainsbury's and actually heavy goods could have gone in and out quite easily without ever being uh, anywhere near the car parking area so it just seems that you know they they put it in there and then we'll we'll make the the rest work around it yeah i mean i think the um uh, Selwood have suggested you know um uh, another alternative for you know where they could go in and where they could exit and I, th I think even back as far on the outline we we were also discussing that with with the applicants you know about you know alternative access and exit in into the site but of course the response is always well that land's not within our ownership so so we can't do that so but it, have they basically got a company lined up who want because you said it's a home something bargains. home yeah. bargain and the other and the other part um is uh, has a question mark against it but that it possibly will be and that's what i've taken from the noise impact assessment but it, sorry carry on fiona 
I was just going to say, if it's home bargains, I don't know if you've driven down the A303 recently, but those are humongous HGVs that those guys operate. Again, I come back to, like, are they basically, they sort of found two companies that want the site, and they, so they're building what those companies would want, basically. Yes. Yeah. And they don't build on spec. They don't, you know, they'll build once they've got a company who says, yes, we'll, we'll have that. Is there not, is that the right location for those two companies? Like, is it not, they is there think not, it is. pardon? <laughs> companies think it is. Well, that, like, if, if they, if what they need, home bargains need is a massive site, which means that then there's not enough, you know, turning them, maybe it's not the right site for them. And they need to look at, <clears throat> what do home bargains sell? Like, home furniture? Does that bring anything to Froom? I don't know. I feel like... I mean, I'm for, well, yeah, that, that, that's yeah, not... Yeah, that's, home furnishings, etc. That's uh, not something that yeah. we, you know, we can have any yeah. influence on. I, th I think fundamentally we're saying we want to see a safer... Yeah, I mean, there's um, so many things, isn't there? Yeah. ...design. I mean, so, it, it is bringing <clears> employment, <throat> so, so that's, that, that's good. And, um, I, you know, in relation to what Fiona was saying, these companies don't come to a town unless they've done their homework and they've established that there is a demand for, for, what, they're, for what they're selling. Um, so, sorry, I think I interrupted Andy there, but you know, it is actually, um, it, it's about making it work, yeah. I think. <coughs> yeah, the, it's, the, um, it's the design of the site, isn't it, really? And the relationship with the, with the lorries and the, and the noise. Yeah. And it, it also annoys me all the time with these, um, and they come for variation of conditions. You know, we fought hard to get the hedgerows in the first place, yeah. you know, over numerous meetings, and then they put a variation in conditions and remove it. it yeah. You know, we see it all the time with, with player applications. And um, no, I, boring. I think we're objecting on noise. We're objecting on HGV dangerous traffic movements. We're objecting on lack of hedgerow. We're objecting on lack of solar. And we're objecting on the fact that it looks like a blot on the landscape. Can we strongly object, please? Like, it's really annoying me. <laughs> That's, I'm pleased to say that all, all of the points I wrote down were exactly the ones that Andy just said, so, yeah. so that's great. Um, I think the, the, only, the only little extra bit I added was about um, deliveries being uh, restricted within certain hours, oh, yeah. if, it's, yeah. if it's approved. Um, can you draw something out to that effect yes, rather than just trying to do it now? Yes, I can indeed. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So we might as well vote on it there. So, Andy, do you want to propose that? Well done, Andy. <laughs> and actually, none of us, thank you. We strongly, we strongly do. Um, so, I haven't um, highlighted any others for discussion um, unless. There are any that you wish to have a further look at? No, great, excellent. Thank you all very much. Um, we need to vote, vote on the the ones that we haven't discussed. That say that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'm new at this. <laughs> we can vote on the ones we haven't discussed. If that's all right with you, Jane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that's yeah. unanimous. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Right. Um, the date of the next meeting is 21st of November 2004. Thank you all. Yeah. At 7 p.m. Are we agreed then? Are we agreed? Yeah, we're No. Nah. Sort of unanimous. We can come at 6.30 if you want. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Good night all. <laughs> <laughs>